Recently, an open source Firefox based browser called Florp has been gaining a lot of popularity. Today, we're going to review it and see if it's truly special or overhyped. Now, I actually tried Florp like a year or two ago before all the hype, and here's how I found out about it. I love browsers, but I used to be obsessed with browsers, and I was always looking for new ones to test. One day, I was searching FlatHub for browsers, and I came across Florp. When I tried it, it was not a bad browser, although I didn't really notice anything special about it, but I didn't use it as my daily driver. First things first, I noticed Florp's website has a view source code button, and it's pretty neat to be able to easily view the source code with just one click. Now let's get the basics out of the way. Florp is an open source Firefox based browser made by a Japanese company called Ablaze. Compared to the amount of Chromium based browsers out there, there is way less Firefox based browsers, so it's great to see that Florp is not another Chromium based browser. Florp is made with the goal of being private, secure, customizable, and up-to-date. Florp is based on Firefox ESR, so regarding being up-to-date, make of that what you will, but it is updated every four weeks, which is good enough. Okay, so I've launched Florp, and I am greeted with this um, setup wizard, so let's run through it. So I'm not going to be importing any bookmarks or anything, but if you click Import Data, It'll usually give you a browser to import from, or it'll let you import from file. In my case, it didn't detect any browser, so it's just giving me import from file or cancel. I'm just going to click cancel. And we have three layouts that we can choose from. Basic, which is normal. Default, which adds the sidebar, which we're going to talk about that in a second. And then advanced, which adds another panel on the bottom. So we're just going to go with default, so... Then we have five themes that we can choose from. So we have Lepton Original, which is the default. Doesn't really look like any other browser, looks unique. Lepton Photon, which looks kind of like Firefox Quantum with the Photon theme, although it has some tweaks. Lepton Proton Fix, meaning they, um, basically they took the Firefox Proton theme, which is this one, as you can see over here. And they changed some things that they think should have been changed. So let's go back to floor up here. So like, for example, this menu over here looks more like um, Photon with the icons and the more compact options. And then we have Florp Flurial. So this is a deprecated theme and it's supposed to make your browser, it's supposed to make Florp look more like Chrome. And it does that very well in dark mode. Let's enable that. And as you can see, it looks very much like Google Chrome. Uh, the tabs, the design, everything over here as well. But in light mode, it looks a little bit strange, a little bit just too white everywhere. It's just strange. So um, we're just going to select, or also there's Proton. So this is just the normal Firefox Proton theme. We're just going to select the Lepton original because that's what was selected by default. And setup is complete. So now let's just take a look. So firstly, the sidebar. It's great and all, it provides quick access to bookmarks, history, downloads, let's just take a look at it. So it has the settings button over here, that's already in the menu, so I don't really see a need for it being there. But then there's also the um, passwords button here, which again is also in the menu. I guess it allows for quick access if you like that, I don't really see a purpose in it, but if you like that then it's great. Then there's the extensions button, which there's one over here too that provides the exact same purpose, as you can see, they do the same thing. So I don't really see a need for having two of them, and you can't remove them from either here or here. So you're always going to have two, you can't remove one of them, or both. They're just stuck there. And then you have these um, websites here on the side. So we have Google Translate, then you have MissKey. So I'm not quite sure what this is, this is some Japanese thing over here. And then you can add your own website, so we're going to test that out right now. We're going to add youtube.com and we're going to use the mobile user agent so that it looks nice and compact instead of strange and now if we click on youtube here it is it's like an opera i guess it's pretty neat but i mean again there's really no real purpose in it i mean you can watch shorts while you're doing something so that's great 
So, and then there's also this option over here, Florp Notes. So, like, Vivaldi has mail, notes, several things. It seems Florp has their own uh, notes panel here in the sidebar. I guess that's cool. Then there is Downloads. And Downloads, History, Bookmarks, Library, which is all of them. That's all over here in the menu, but I guess Quick Access is pretty convenient here. History, Bookmarks... Here's the full library. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's not terrible, but not really my cup of tea. If you like it, that's great. Then there is Florp View. So, uh, Firefox View. Let's actually show that real, real quick. This is Firefox View. It just kind of, it shows you your tabs open on this device, on other devices. You know, it's for sync. It shows sync tabs, it shows tabs on this browser, it shows bookmarks, well not bookmarks, it shows history, sorry. It recently closed tabs, I don't really see a need for it, again, this stuff is in the menu, it's just an extra, it looks like a pin tab over here, but, I mean, it's fine. And then in Florp, you have the same thing, but it's called Florp View. Let's actually try to um, take a look at this top bar over here. So let's go to florp.app. Let's see how fast Florp is. Now, just for your information, my computer is on the slower side. It's not a very fast computer at all. But let's see how long it takes to load. Okay, that was actually pretty quick. That did not take too long. In general, Florp is a pretty fast browser. And you can do some pretty neat things in here. So first of all, there's Reader View, like there is in Firefox. Then there is this option over here. You can scan the QR code and I guess open this tab on your phone with the Firefox mobile app. And then there is, of course, the bookmark option. And here's the cool feature, Split View. Now, several browsers have this already. I think Opera has it. I know Edge has it. It's a pretty neat feature, so let's, for example, open YouTube, right? YouTube.com. If you want two websites side by side, you can do that in Florp by just right-clicking on the other tab that you want on the side, clicking Fixed in Split View, and choosing if you want that site to be on the left or the right. So let's do the left for this purpose. And as you can see, we have two websites side by side. You can't adjust how big or small one website is, but, I mean, it's still a pretty neat feature. Split view is pretty useful. So that's cool. And then there's containers. So containers are one of Firefox's great features, but it's not enabled by default in Firefox. So here's what a container is. Let's say we uh, open in new container tab. You can have your personal container with your personal tabs, your work container with your work tabs, for banking as well, shopping, and private. So let's do work, right? Here we go. Now we have it in the work container. And while there is containers, one great feature, and also speaking of, in Split View, before we move on to about containers, if you want to get rid of one site from the Split View, you just click on that site, right click on it, and click close split tab and now there are their own tabs again they're not split anymore so i would think it's better if there's a split view button over here but it's fine it works it's pretty neat okay so back to containers uh they have containers which are pretty neat right let's say we have that one in work we have this one in personal right we can have another one in personal i think so there you go, you can just open tabs in these containers, and it's a pretty neat feature. But one feature that Florp does not have is tab groups. Tab groups, uh, let's demonstrate this in Brave. In general, Firefox-based browsers don't have tab groups, unless you download the extension, of course. There's extensions for that. But let's go to Brave over here. So let's say you have several tabs open for a certain purpose, right? Let's say you have your Google tabs over here you can create a tab group. So these are very, they're basically a way of organizing your tabs. So you can right click on YouTube, click add to new tab group or add to new group. Let's say Google. 
And there you go, now you have a tab group. So we can add the Google tab in here. We can close it and use it when we need it. And same with these two tabs over here, DuckDuckGo and Florp. So let's say add tabs to new group. Just new group, let's call it, um, I don't know, private. And there you go, you can use this group over here. You can close this one. Or, or if you close both, it'll open a new tab. So, you know, it's just a way of organizing, and it's pretty neat, honestly. It's a great feature. Unfortunately, again, without extensions, Florp does not have that feature. Uh, let's take a look at these icons real quick. So, if we close this tab, you can reopen closed tabs by just clicking on this button right here. And while you can do that in the history menu over here by clicking recently closed tabs and clicking the one you want to reopen, or you can reopen all of them, this is just an easy way of doing it. You can just click one button and it reopens, as you can see. It's just very convenient. And then also, let's take a look at the settings because that is where a lot of the customization options are at. So let's just go there. Okay, so here in design, here is our themes. Firefox Proton, Photon, and Lepton, Flurial, and the GNOME theme. So if you're on GNOME, uh, the desktop environment, then you're going to have a much better theme that is more consistent with the GNOME theme. But it looks a little weird because you have this bookmarks bar over here, and then you have the tab bar. And if you close one tab, let's close this one, it's just one big tab over here. It just looks strange. So, yeah, I wouldn't really recommend that one. I'm just going to move back to uh, Lepton. And now there's several tab styles over here. There's horizontal, which is like this, of course, right? You just open tabs, and if you open a lot of tabs, it's just going to stack up like that. With another uh, option called multi-row tabs, let's actually demonstrate that over here. We can select multi-row tab bar. Let's restart Florp. Okay, and now you'll notice that the tab bar is much smaller. So if we open a lot of tabs again, instead of just continuously going like that, it's going to open on a second row over here. And I believe it'll open on a third row as well. Yep, as you can see. So it's just uh, multi-row tabs if you open a lot. Now that's not going to be good if you have like a hundred tabs. It's going to take up like half of the screen. But it's a neat feature if you like it. And we also have the option to basically move the plus button from all the way over here to over here. This is the normal, uh, this is normally where it's located, but in multi row, by default, it's all the way over here next to the search tabs button and floor view. Now, of course, I like it better when it's over here next to the tab, but over here is fine too. And you can enable a row limit for multi-row tabs. So in this case, three or ten. And that if you if you do like ten, then it's gonna take up like half the screen. And then we have the vertical tab bar. So this will do what it says. It'll give you vertical tabs, and that's pretty neat. Some people like vertical tabs. It's it's the new uh, trend here. It's not bad. I'm personally not really a fan of vertical tabs. Uh, just not my thing, but. If you like it, it's great. You can also collapse the vertical tab bar. Let's restart Florp. And now you'll notice that it just looks like icons over here. Well, when you hover over it, it's going to show you the tab, which is pretty neat. Although it becomes see-through, so that is weird. You can add new tab, list all tabs, Florp view. So Florp view moves down here. Okay, you can show the vertical tab bar on this side, if you prefer that, on the right side. I just keep it on the left if I'm going to use it. But um, I'm just going to stick with horizontal over here, because that's my preference. Okay, so now we have some changes we can make to these tabs over here. We can hide tabs on horizontal tab bar. So I guess if you hover over, it just hides the tabs, so I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to use them. Over here now we can also display the tab bar underneath the toolbar like this if you prefer that. I 
kind of like it this way, not gonna lie, although I think I prefer them on top, but if you like it this way, you can do it this way. You can display them at the bottom of the window, so they'll be down here. I'm not, I'm personally not really a fan of this design, but again, if you like it, you can do that. There's a lot of customization. I'm just gonna go with default. And you can color the tab bar using the current website's favicon color. Okay, I think Vivaldi has a similar feature. So if we go to youtube.com, I think the tab will turn red. Okay, not sure it didn't really do anything there. But theoretically, it should uh, turn the color of the favicon. So you can hide the bookmarks toolbar unless hovering over the navigation bar. So if you hover over, it'll show. If you don't, then it'll disappear. Or you can show the bookmarks toolbar at the bottom of Florp. So it'll just be down here which is uh, pretty interesting. I'm just going to disable both, but again, you can also show the toolbar at the bottom of Florp, as you can see. And then if you want, you can dis uh, display at the bottom of the window, the tab bar, and now it's all at the bottom over here. I'm just going to put that back again. And you can also round the corners of pages. So as you can see, it's now rounded corners around the page. Okay, so I think that's enough talking about the design panel. So now let's review the browser sidebar manager. Browser manager sidebar, sorry. So you can, well, you can hide it all together if you want. Or you can display it on the right, which is like Brave. Or you can display it on the left, which is more like Opera and Vivaldi too, I think. We're just going to display it on the right. Over here, we can now change the arrangement of these options over here. So let's say we want history to be below downloads. We can just click one button and it'll be below downloads. And so you can just arrange like that. You can add websites here too. You can restore the defaults if you'd like that. And then we also have workspaces. So I wasn't quite able to figure out how to use workspaces. I'm not sure of how to do that, but maybe there's some way to do it. I just couldn't get it working. And then we have keyboard shortcuts. So here you can change the shortcuts or add shortcuts for all these abilities over here. Now in the home section, there's also some changes. You can change the floor home background. So this one in the back, currently it's taking random images from Unsplash, but you can change that to gradient, custom folder, custom image, or disable the background altogether. Of course, you can change the new tabs, home page, and new windows can disable the blur effect on Florp Home, so let's, okay, so this was blurry before, now it's not, and if we enable that again, now it's blurred, as you can see. In privacy and security, things get interesting, because Florp claims to be a very private and secure browser, and one thing I noticed is I couldn't find any mention of telemetry here. Because in Firefox, you can enable or disable telemetry. So I'm guessing that Florp removed telemetry altogether, which is a great thing. But then over here, you can also enable strong protection against fingerprinting, which enables forced light mode, disables some APIs or features, but some sites may break. HTTPS only mode is disabled by default. In my opinion, this should definitely be enabled in all windows because it just makes your browsing experience much more secure. I really do think they should change that. Now let's take a look at some other features. Both Chrome and Firefox have the Profiles feature. If you don't know what that is, profiles are, let's say one profile is yours, right? It has your bookmarks, your history, your sync account, if, if you're logged into one. Let's say you make a new profile or someone else makes a new profile on the same browser. They're gonna have different bookmarks. They're gonna have different history, different cookies. They may be signed into a different account or not at all. And so profiles are a pretty neat feature. And over here in uh, Florp, Florp makes it easier to access them. So let's just click manage profiles. And as you can see, we can manage them over here. It's not as nice of an interface or user friendly as in Chromium based browsers but it works, so it does the job. So, is Florp truly special or overhyped? Florp is great, and if you love customization and you love Vivaldi, you're gonna love Florp. But Florp is majorly overhyped,
and I'm going to stick with Firefox, as I don't see any reason for me to switch to Florp. Like this video and subscribe so that you don't miss our awesome Linux and tech videos, and join the Penguin Byte Discord community with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, see you next time.